Good morning. Welcome to Lori's Country Cottage How Tuesday. I'm Lori, and I would like to introduce you to one of our new one of our newer instructors, Brenda Boychuk. Uh, Brenda worked 33 years in the IT department of Edmonton Public School Board and has since retired and has found more time now for her hobbies, which we are lucky because she has joined us in January for teaching, uh, specializing in uh, foundation paper piecing and the quilt works patterns. So if you're interested in that, you best look up some of our classes this fall with Brenda. Brenda started quilting at a very young age. She helped her grandma with um, quilting and since has, with the quilting evo evolution of the new tools, etc., and techniques, now Brenda is teaching her grandma how to quilt or, or the new tools, I guess. Uh, anyhow, uh, Brenda also volunteers at the Well Springs, which is through the through the cancer hospital for those people who are affected by cancer. She teaches them beginner quilting. So let's welcome Brenda. She's going to tell us about her favorite things. If you have been following, I tr I challenge the girls to come up with a few of their favorite tools to share with you. Um, their quilting experience with those tools. So welcome Brenda and How Tuesday with Lori's Country Cottage. Hi, my name is Brenda Boychuk and I'm here today to talk to you about the Acorn line of products. They've got some wonderful tools that I really enjoy using in order to make sure that my piecing is as precise as possible. So the first thing that I want to show you today is the, um, the seam align glue. The seam align glue comes in a nice little bottle with a little metal tip on it that allows you to do very accurate gluing and it also has a refill bottle. So when you run out in the little one, buy a big one and fill up the little one because you don't want to keep buying the little ones. So what I like to use it for, there's two reasons I like to use it the most. The one is I like to do a lot of contrast where I work with very light fabrics and very dark fabrics. And what happens every once in a while is as I'm sewing, and I'm going to try and put this up against my hand so you see it, you'll see that my dark actually snuck forward and is sticking out below my light. Because I'm doing one of the tucker techniques, I have to press towards my light. And what ends up happening, and it's hard to show you on the camera, but you can see the shadow of the dark fabric peeking through. This block is a reject. I won't use it in my quilt because once it's quilted, it seems to really stand out. And the light shines on it when it's on your bed and you go, oh, yuck, why did I do that? So what I like to do is I like to try and offset it just ever so slightly. And so I don't know if you can see, I'll try and put it on my hand as a contrast. You can just see that the white is sticking out just a little bit past the blue. And now when I press it towards the white, there's no blue shadow showing through because the blue is tucked in. But when you're putting that on your machine, and just the way it's going through your feed dogs and that, it's really easy for it to slip and move on you. So what I've come up with as a solution is I like to just glue it down ever so slightly. So I'll take my white fabric and I'll put it down and then I'm going to put my blue on top. And what I do is I just run a fine little dot of the glue, just a fine little bit. Try to keep it in your quarter inch. I went a little deeper than I would normally, sorry. And then I lay this down, just being careful that I've got, sorry, I put the glue bottle in front of the camera, just so that I've got it touching. And then that way, now I can take it to the machine and I can continue to, to work on it. You'll notice that that is holding it enough. The instructions actually say that you're supposed to tack it down with an iron and then that will hold it together. And you can do that, but a lot of times I just use the glue and I find it's good enough for what I want to do. It's just holding it still so that you can see my little bit of white is showing and holds it in place. If you put them all together and then you go, Frig, I didn't position this in the right spot because these tucker ones, 
you know, sometimes you have to overlap here, overlap on that side. It's, this one was ironed um, a while ago, so I want to show you how easy one that's been sitting for a while opens up. You can just pull it off and it's ready to be moved whichever way you have to move it to realign it again. So that's one use that I use it for. The other use that I really like this for is putting down applique pieces. So, oops, sorry, Lori, <laughs> I'm trying to. Um, this is one of my placemats that I have, and I have these applique pieces that I'm going to take to my sewing machine, and I'm going to just do a really fine zigzag around here. So I want something that will hold it in place. And so what I do is I take the, the glue, and I just run just a light little bead just around the edge, go right down to the tip, a light little bead around the edge, and I don't go right on the edge, you'll notice that I've stayed back a little bit because I don't want any coming out onto the fabric when I'm done. And then I can just position it in place where I want it and, oops, and I put it where I want it. And then once I know where it's in a good place, I just take the iron and just dry the glue. And that will heat set the glue. So those are the two main reasons that I like this product. And I do a lot of this applique, so that's, it comes in very handy for that. So that's the seam aligned glue. Sorry, I was putting my lid back on because I hate it with, when they dry up on you and then you can't use it. So the next thing on that I would like to show you is the, the Acorn Precision Piecing um, Easy Press, sorry, it's their fabric treatment product is what it's called. It comes in a bottle with the refill and one of these spray bottles comes with it. And it's good for a few things. Where I like it is if I don't want to wash the fabric, but I want it pre-shrunk, then this works really well. I can put it on and it actually pre-shrinks the fabric. It's, if I also, if I have some fabric that I find is really fraying, for example, if you look at this fabric and you see how easy I'm pulling the threads off of it, it frays very easy. And as I'm sewing products like this, I see them as I'm handling it and working it, I'm getting all these frays and then they get into my seams and then I gotta clean it up on the front side and that drives me crazy. On this piece, I treated one side with the fabric treatment and on the other side I d is, has nothing. So I wanna show you now, if I did the same amount of pulling, I make a layer, it does not fray the same, and that just frayed on me. And I did this at home and it didn't fray. <laughs> um, because, but it does, when you're handling, I mean, I'm being really gruff with my fingernail, right? Like here, uh, but if you were just handling it and sewing, it does eliminate a lot of the fraying. So this fabric, I don't know if you're like me, but you pull your fabric out of the cupboard and you want to use it now and you don't really want to spend the time taking it to the um, washing machine and the dryer and doing all that. But look at the, the crinkles in it. I could never use this. And if I just took the iron and I ran the iron over it, you'll notice that, yeah, some of the crinkles are coming out, but I'm still, even if I hold the iron for a while, I still have those crease lines in there. They're not coming out. They, they continue to stay in. And so what I really like is this product because I can, I can just do a light, well, a light mist, Brenda, I went a little heavy on it. And, um, and then I just sort of go over it now with the iron, oops, and iron a crease in it. And you'll see that those lines are gone. I find it really, really helpful when I have a light batique because some of the white batiks um, get so creased. And this is about the only product that I have found that will really take the creases out of the white batiks when they're in there. So you can see that's laying a lot flatter. I don't know if you could tell, but you can see it's got rid of that crease a lot better than before in those crinkles. So that's that product. The last product that I would like to talk to you is about is the Acorn fold, Folding Pen. And um, this, or sorry, it's actually called Easy Press Pen. I was introduced to this product when I was down on a retreat down in the States and the ladies were all using it and they were shocked that I wasn't using it because it was such a great tool and it's Canadian. 
So with the way everything's going now in our economy and that, I really like to support Canadian companies. So this, that is a plus for this tool. What I, I'm going to actually show you three uses of the pen. The first one I'd like to show you is whenever I have something that has a lot of bulk. I don't know if you can see. Um, there's a lot of bulk here. So I'm going to press this at my seam, the same as we normally would. I'm going to do a little tout for a purple fang, and I know one of the other instructors has already done it, but it's so wonderful when you're pressing your seams open, which is what this pattern calls for. So I just use that, my purple fang, to do it instead of my thumbnail, or because I always seem to break my thumbnails. But as you can see, I've got a lot of bulk right here. It's really thick. So what I want to do is just put a slight little bit of the glue right in that corner, or sorry, not glue, the pressing liquid right in the corner. And then I just put the iron down here and just set it for a minute. I prefer to iron from the right side. So then I'm going to just give it a press from the right side. And you'll see that that's eliminated a lot of the bulk. It's not sticking up. It's a lot flatter than it would be if we had have just ironed it without the um, easy press pen. And I really like it when I've got those because when you're starting to quilt that later, that bulk gets hung up on the uh, foot of the long arm. So you want to get that nice and smooth. So that's one way I use it a lot. The other way I is I like to do curved seams. And um, so this is a curved seam that I'm going to be pressing. And what I would do is I would take I like to, well, I could do it from the right side. I would just go and just run the smallest, just a sec, I've got to prime my pen just to get a little bit more liquid out. And especially in these joints where I've got a little bit of thickness due to the, um, the, all the seams coming together, I just run a little bit of it on there. I don't like to over put it on, but just a bit. And then I can take, come into my iron, and I can just sort of take that and work my... Now I had already finger pressed this, so if you're thinking it was laying pretty flat, when I had sewn it together I had finger pressed it a bit, so that's why it was sitting, because I wanted to make sure I had no creases before I brought it here. So now if you look at it, I've got a beautiful nice um, curved seam, and all those intersections where I have all this fabric, if you could feel it, you'd be shocked at how flat they feel. So that's my other use. And my last use for it is, I'm working on the same pattern here. I have this, and I don't know if you could tell, but I've actually got my seams going in the same direction. And so that's causing a lot of layers of fabric there. I have um, ang angles coming together here. So just a really bulky seam. And if you were to do this normally, what you would find is you'd end up with a lot of bumps in those areas. So what I would do is I would just run a little bit of this on the fabric. And you can see on the yellow that it's actually going on. You can't see it too much on the other colors. Now, I put a pin so I'd know which way I have to press this for my pattern. So I actually want to press it this way. I always press from the right side. So then I would just take this and just put my iron on. And gently, so I don't stretch my fabric at all, just fold it over and press it. And that gives me a nice flat seam. Now I could actually put a little bit more of the solution right here because I was working from the other side. And if you look, if you can see here, look at all the seams I've got all coming in in one spot. So I'm going to just put a little bit more of the liquid there because I could feel it wasn't going as flat as I would like it. You could tell I was sticking my finger under there going, come on, lay flatter. And now I've got a nice flat seam. So that's the pressing pen. I think it's a really nice product and definitely worth getting. So hi there. I just wanted to show you the packaging for the products. If you go on to our shelves and start looking for them, so you know what you're looking for. The, um, the glue align and the pen come in a package together. And the pen is actually empty when you open it, and you, f you can fill it with this, the bottle of fabric treatment that's in here. So you've got your bottle, you've got your pen, and you've got this. If you buy the fabric treatment like this 
way. Within the spray bottle, the spray bottle also comes, you can buy it with a refill bottle. Then you can buy just an empty glue pen. And from the refill bottle that you put in here, you can put into the glue pen and use it that way. There also is available extra nibs for the glue pen. So if you find that it's getting really stained because you've been using it on a lot of bright colors or something, you can replace little nibs. And I didn't think to grab a package of those and we do have them here at the store. These are the Acorn products. Um, Lori's Country Cottage carries them and I wish you luck sewing with them. Thank you.